Hi everyone. Before we talk about your LIFO inventory, I wanted to just remind you of inventory calculations overall. You can use something called the base formula to help you make that calculation. Let me get my pen going here. go with some blue. So to get your beginning balance, you often have to look at the date. You may be given a number that just says um, inventory. So I've just put some dates on the screen. So for instance, you may be given something information that says inventory at 1231-2025, inventory at 1231-2026. So you have to determine which of those balances would be your beginning balance and which would be your ending balance. So for the amount that was given to you for 1231-2025, that was your ending balance for the previous period. So beginning this new period on January 1st of 2026, that becomes your beginning balance. So this would be beginning. So that means this one, the 2026, would be your end balance, which is also important. So for base, begin with your beginning balance. Add any purchases and, and costs that are allowed to be included with those purchases to the total of your inventory. Next, you're going to subtract the cost of the goods that have been sold. They're no longer there. They've left the house. They're no longer in the warehouse. So you want to subtract those out. And that will get you to your ending inventory. So B is for beginning. Think about what your beginning balance is and write that down. Add any purchases and additional costs to getting your inventory going. Subtract the cost of the goods that are sold, have been sold, and that should get you then to your ending balance. So base will help you to think through that. It also helps with some other calculations we need to make in accounting. It's especially helpful, especially helpful here with inventory. Also add later, you'll see that add is called transfers in. So begin with your beginning balance and then include transfers in. Those things that you subtract are going to be called transfers out and that will get you to your ending inventory. But for now, Let's examine LIFO. LIFO stands for last in, first out. Last in, first out. This is a cost assumption that we use in our accounting. Sometimes it doesn't mean that this is really how the merchandise flowed as the, the first in, the last in was the first physical goods that went out. But this is going to be our assumption for this particular model. We are going to focus on the perpetual inventory system. This is what's widely used in the world today with the advent of bar scanners. It's very easy to do this as opposed peri the uh, periodic would be the other method as opposed to perpetual. Perpetual means that the inventory account is constantly updated for goods that come in and then for the cost of the merchandise as it flows out and, and the number, the physical count as well. So we're interested in our physical count and we're interested in the dollar value account. For LIFO, we are assuming the dollar value is going to be, cost is going to be tied to the last goods in are assumed to be the first ones that flow out. So for this data set, we have Ezra Monroe Farms. I have already put in the date of January the 8th. That is because this is our beginning inventory. So beginning inventory, we had 20 units, $16 each. So Beginning inventory, $320. Now I'm using some very simple, easy numbers here, but this would work the same whether you used, um, even if you use big numbers, the process would be the same. So then on the 8th, 15 units were sold. So the cost of the merchandise is here in the middle. 15 units sold, so we need to go to the inventory account and see what cost we have. Well, fortunately, we only have one layer or one level of cost in this case, and it's $16. So we'll be able to just multiply, take that number and multiply that across. And I'm just using Excel to do this for me. So 15 units at $16 each would be 240 So then we had 20 units. 20 minus the 15 that we just sold leaves us 5. 
So five units, and they're still priced at the $16. And let me just use Excel for this purpose as well. If you've got your calculator, you'll do the same thing. So we sold 15 units. We have five units left, one level of pricing, which is $16. So this is our ending inventory after this sale on January the 15th. Now let's see what happens on February 22nd. We have a purchase. So I'm looking at this item. Perhaps I should do it in a different color as we're hitting those numbers. Make sure that we don't over, over count and that you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so what did they purchase? 30 units at $18. So let's get these tallied in. So I'm saying the 30 units times $18, 540, doesn't impact the cost of the goods sold. However, this does show up now in our ending inventory. Let me just copy that and bring it over. So what we have left in inventory now at this point, let me just highlight them differently. We have both of these units. We have five at $16 and we have 30 at $18. So all these items are still in the ending inventory. So I'm going to leave them highlighted gold. Okay, next we're going to have a sale on February the 25th. So let's go to February 25th. And we'll put in these items. How many are we selling? We're selling 25 items. Now the question is, how do we cost them? Do we need to pull from both layers of cost? We have some at $16, some at $18. Well, we can get them all. Remember, we're looking at last in is considered to be, will be considered the first ones to leave. So we only want to look at this last line. So the last items in were in purchased at a cost of $18. We can take them all from this because there were 30 purchased and we only sold 25. So this works out that we can take from the one layer. So let's get that multiplied across. 25 units are going to be priced out at $18. Now what do we have left? Well, now we still have these five items. We did not, whoops, I don't want to cut, copy. We do not want to uh, forget that we had those. Just doing a copy here to show that we are bringing them down. And then of the 30, we had 30, we sold 25, so we have 5 left of this layer, okay? So let me just bring that down to, if we need more space, we'll take it. So of the 30, 5 are left. Okay, so I'm going to take the highlight off of these items now. Just so that we can see, you wouldn't really uh, do this. You do it in a way that makes sense to you. But we're going to do it with the, the kind of golden color so you can keep up with what's still in the inventory. So I've put it on two different lines now because we have two different pricing layers. So let me skip on down to the next item. We have a sale of five units on March. Skipping a line to make it easier for you to see, hopefully. So March 1st, skip over purchases. Here's where we have the sale. So five items. So our question is, how do we cost those items? We have five at 16. We have five at 18. Well, because we're using LIFO, we're going to take the five from the last layer. So we're going to price them at $18. So we're going to say the five times the 18 leaves 90. Now we need to update our records again. So what is left? So all of these items moved out. The last in were the first to go. So actually these at the $16 are all that we have left now at this point. So I'm just going to bring this over. I'm going to highlight this to get it gone. So at this point I have only five units and they're priced at $16 each. Let's see what happens next. On March the 15th, we have a purchase of 50 units. So March 15th, first columns are four purchases. So we purchased 50 units and we paid $15, or the company did. I say we as if we're the company. But we can say 50 times 19, so $950 
in goods were purchased. So let's bring those over as well. Since we're not selling anything, I'm just going to bring it over and post it. Whoops, post it in the wrong place. Let me cut that and put it here. Okay, so now I'm going to highlight this as well because this is our ending inventory. When we're asked how many units do we have left, well, we have those new units we just purchased at $19. We also have that old layer of five units at $16. Okay, so let's skip over purchases. We didn't purchase anything this time. So what we did do was sell 15 units. So how do I need to cost those? Well, it turns out I'm pulling from the last in, the last items that came in, and they are there were 50 of them. They're all valued at $19. I can take the whole 15 from that from that purchase. So $285. Now what do I have left? Well, I still have those five here, the five at $16. Of the 50, remember that we we assumed that 15 of those were sold in that sale on March 31st. So 50 minus 15 leaves 35. So the other number, the other items that are left in the inventory are the 35. And their cost is going to be the 19. Okay, and then when I do the math, 35 times 19, I get 665. So let me now highlight this to show that we've already moved forward our numbers. So what is my ending inventory now at this point? I have the old layer, 5 units at $16, and I have 35 units at $19. So now we're asked to calculate what is the cost of the goods sold, so that's this number right here, cost of the goods sold, and then what is the ending inventory balance. So let's just do that. And actually, I'm just going to go through and add these items up. Okay, I've gone through and added some totals now, and uh, some of these informations uh, columns do make sense to tally and some do not. For instance, um, let's answer the questions first. So I've totaled up the total cost for the cost of the goods that have been sold. And this is where you see 1065 Let me bold that for you. So just adding up 240 450 90 285 we get 1065 Now, what is my ending inventory? Well, ending inventory, we don't tally up the entire column. We only need to tally up what's still left. So the five items at 15 at $16 plus 35 items at $19. This is all that is left. So the ending inventory, we have physical units of 40, a total of $745. I went ahead also and tallied up the number of units and the amount of the purchases and the same thing on the physical units for cost of the merchandise sold because all of these items have to reconcile back. So let me put these in a um, kind of a different color to, um, I don't want red, let me just put them in blue. This answers the question, but I want you to think a little bit more about it so that you can reconcile back and know if you're correct or not most of the time. Okay, let's go back and use that base formula that we talked about on the previous slide and see if we can come up with our, um, reconcile our numbers back. So for beginning balance, I want to pick up the dollar amount, and also I want to track the physical units over on the left. So the dollar amount, remember, was right here. $320 were at the beginning inventory. Let's see if I can put it right there. How many units did that represent? That was for 20 units. It doesn't matter about the $16 at this point. Now we're just making the calculations. Let me make those just a little bit bigger, make it a little easier. And you all know you can do full screen on these if the numbers get to be too small. Okay, purchases. So remember we total our purchases back over on the left. Total dollar purchases, $1,490. How many units was that? Remember your total at the bottom here, 80. So let's just to the left here, let's just add those 80 units in as well. So let's total these items up to see how much we actually need to account for. I'm going to underline to show some math's taking place here. And we'll total up these physical units as well. And so, 
have to think I'll center that to get it off the line a little bit. Okay, so we have a total of a 100 units to account for, $1,810. Where are they? Well, some have been sold. So let's subtract the dollar value of those that have been sold, and let's subtract, and this is where I'm getting that number, remember, and then the total number of units that has been sold is right there beside it, so that is 60. $45 is what we have, so we're good there. And now let's do the same thing with physical units. So preparing your physical units, where'd my sum go? There we go. We end up with 40 units still in inventory. And so if we go and look over here, we'll see the same thing. We have 40 units. So you should be able to reconcile back. And if you use the base formula, that should help.